play it on Xbox One. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Forza Horizon 4 live stream from Playground Games. I am joined by Ralph, who you'll have seen just on Inside Xbox, and also Ben, who is the art director. And going off of Ralph's comment as well, what is your favorite season? Uh, well, so I would say winter, but I can't say the same thing as Ralph. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to go, I, I'm going to, actually, genuinely, autumn is my favorite season. I Ooh. think there's, there's like a, there's a coziness to it, and um, I think, in real life, it's also my favorite season. There's something about that time of year. It's the trees, isn't it? You just love the trees, which yeah. we're, we're going to get onto in a, to a yeah. second. But <laughs> Ralph, uh, for everyone watching at home, I think uh, you can just tell a little bit, everyone, a little bit about Forza Horizon 4 for those wondering a bit about the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Larry just reminded me uh, on uh, Inside Xbox that it's been a month since we were at E3, which it seems like an eternity, right? Um, yeah, we announced the game then. We were on the stage. We had a demo. We were doing some presentations. We got great feedback um, from that week. It was great to, to finally announce the game to our fans, which we did, and also to hear their feedback. And we've been hearing it since. Uh, it felt like now is the time that we should, uh, we should start showing them more uh, of this enormous game. Uh, so as we said at E3, it, you know, it's, it's still set in beautiful, historic Britain. Yeah. Uh, it's still a game in which seasons change everything, and these two things go, go hand to hand. And, and seasons, I think, is probably our entry point to, to this live stream and the, and the live streams that we're going to be doing through July. Yeah. Uh, we are focusing on summer tonight, and as I said earlier, we're going to be uh, showing autumn and winter and spring uh, over the next few weeks um, of July. Um, but we're going to be showing lots more as well. You know, yes. as, as you know, uh, Ben is here. We have a bunch of team members uh, who are going to be swinging by. We're going to be showing some features that maybe we've mentioned but not really talked a, a great deal about. And certainly the thing you can be certain of is uh, we're going to be showing you gameplay uh, that, w that nobody has seen before outside this studio. Now, I'm really excited because in this live stream we're going to be taking a look at summer, as we've said. But one thing to keep in mind as well, we are playing on developer's build. So this is an early look at the game. This isn't the final product that's going to be going out, but we're going to see lots of awesome features, lots of awesome footage. Taking a look at summer as well, uh, we're going to be looking at skies, houses, customization. I'm really excited. Should we start kind of like hop into some games? Because I'm, I'm sure everyone at home as well is the same. That's, uh, we want to start seeing some gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. We want to hop in, see what we've got to be excited about. Um, so first things first, we're starting outside, outside one of our homes. Um, what's the main features of summer? Um, so that's a good question. Let me just go back to something you just said there, which because I think it's a, um, a, a very important uh, caveat. Yeah, we are we're still in development. Um, we are still working really hard, uh, and I think we're about three months out from uh, from launch. Mm -hmm. So this is a developer build. Um, it is uh, still a work in progress. You might see some bugs uh, in there, but I know you'll forgive us for that um, because. Um, I, I think it's really important that we start showing our fans more of this game yeah. after having talked about it last month, and that's what we're doing. But to your, to your question, what are the features of summer? Um, I think what we're seeing right here is, is kind of actually exactly the kind of summer we're seeing outside. At hot. The <laughs> really hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we said at E3 um, that we wanted summer in Forza Horizon 4 to be like the perfect British summer. And I yeah. think some people may be like <laughs> sniggered a little bit because the uh, British summer doesn't have the, the, the greatest reputation. Um, certainly we're in the middle of a heat wave here. It's been 30 degrees. We haven't seen rain in weeks. Everyone would be like, oh, if, if this was an English summer a few years ago, I'd be like, this isn't summer. There's no rain, there's no wind. It's just like a couple of days of sun, normally everyone's really happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one thing as well is, like, uh, for everyone watching at home, if you've got any questions about Horizon 4, do drop them into the chat. Uh, both Ralph and Ben will be answering them. Um, so anything you've got, uh, put your questions in the chat right now. But Ben, I know you love the trees. Oh, I do. Right? I like, I, we, we've talked about it all day. Right? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the trees in Horizon 4? Sure. So I, it's fair to say every, every location that we go to with a Horizon game poses certain challenges when it comes to visuals. And, um, and Britain is known for being incredibly green in summer. It's one of the things when you have people who visit you from other countries, I don't know whether you've had the same thing, but people always go like, I can't believe how lush and green this country is. Um, and so, so that, was, that was obviously a big focus for us this time. So we spent a lot of time completely overhauling all of the rendering work that we put into our foliage. So um, 
All of our foliage shaders now do some really cool things, like they model the transmission of light through leaves, they model the specular across individual leaves, and it's all built up to give us the, the sort of rich variety of different types of foliage that you have uh, in Britain uh, that you didn't necessarily have in locations like Australia, for example. Yeah, it, just, it does look absolutely gorgeous, because you've got like individual leaf like render it like you've rendered it individual leaves now which will kind yeah. of like change the shadows yes uh, per pixel lighting is the it's the fancy term that we uh, we throw at that that's what that is per pixel lighting yeah because because it's summer as well like the, the arc of the sun is different to other seasons isn't it so Absolutely. you're going to get different shadows and different colorings on the on these trees yeah sure so um here's a, a cool a cool bit of backstory actually so so right back when we were first um investigating the tech that is now inside um, this game in terms of how the lighting is being reproduced. Uh, we did some, some sky captures, some uh, sky data captures, and we threw it actually on the uh, Horizon 2 environment that we had back then on the Amalfi yeah. Coast. And that capture was taken uh, from the UK uh, in the middle of winter. And so it had this real stark kind of beauty to it. Um, but it was also quite, quite, quite a bleak look. And we threw that on top of uh, Amalfi and instantly it kind of had this weird thing where it's like, I've never seen the Italian coast looking wintry like that. Yeah. Um, so so we, we knew that um, having the correct seasons captured and, and replicating game was gonna be a huge part of making sure that that authenticity came through with regards to the lighting model. So, so this, is, this is true for this. So this is a, a capture that was actually taken last summer. So I don't, I don't know whether you remember, but actually it's, it's we talk about- the, Yeah, we talk about this summer being amazing, but last summer, was also pretty incredible. Yeah, um, so it's a, it's a good replication. We've yeah. also just got some questions into the stream. So do rangers ask, where are all the potholes in the roads? Oh, they are, they are. in fact, we, we just went- literally just passed <laughs> yeah. one. Good time. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what you want. <laughs> um, yeah, so, we, so uh, actually on the subject of potholes, we, we uh, have a process that we use in the studio called photogrammetry. Yeah. Basically where you take a ton of photographs of something and it will then reconstruct the thing you took the photographs of in 3D. And we actually did that with the potholes in this game. So we actually took people out and they did scans of real life potholes and they are... So these are real potholes they along are the British roads. Potholes real well, yeah. British yeah. potholes. You know, yeah. you've got to carry that history across. This is the British <laughs> pothole. Uh, we've also got a question because this summer, summer is obviously, it's hot, it's beautiful. But one of the questions is, will it still rain in summer? It, yes, it, it will still rain in summer as it, as it does here. And I'm, I'm sure it will. Still this summer, it's going to rain, right? I um, hope so. Eventually, <laughs> it has to. The reservoirs um, are running out. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I guess a big thing about the, the seasons is how weather conditions change uh, amongst them. What we've gone for, as uh, I've said before, is kind of like the perfect British summer. Um, recreated in, in the summer of Forza Horizon 4, uh, which means it's hot, which means uh, the, the sun is high, um, but it's still going to rain and it will still rain yeah. in the summer, probably just less so than it does in spring and autumn, which are much more uh, our, our rainy seasons, I guess. Yeah. Like, one of the things, like, talking from weather is the thing that makes me excited about seasons is it's going to help complement different racing styles. So, like, in winter, I can kind of see drifting being really effective because you're going on ice, uh, while in summer, you could be, like, straight road racing, you're going to be able to get those speeds. Is that something that you expect players to experience? So, I, I definitely think different seasons will complement um, like different styles of gameplay, different uh, types of gameplay. One, one thing that we have really been um, uh, really at pains to ensure within the game is that you can still do everything and have fun doing everything in every season. Right? Yeah. That's incredibly important to us. Um, so you, you can do everything in summer that you can in winter or, or autumn and spring. Um, it all still works. Obviously, the seasons will change the driving experience. And, you know, at its most extreme uh, in winter, you're going to have ice, you're going to have snow. That's going to change up uh, the way you tackle corners, the kind of cars you take into races. Um, but you can still um, take out a supercar and drive along a, a road which is clear of snow yeah. um, in winter, and you can still have fun with that. We don't want to gate anything uh, behind seasons. So there's another thing with seasons. As we know, in winter, lakes are going to freeze over, and you're going to be able to go and like, kind of visit areas that you wouldn't be able to see in summer. Is there anything like that that in summer that's going to change, like with the heat? Is it going to like? Is there anything that's going to change? Yeah, absolutely. So, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like, still with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. I just got I got carried away looking at the the game. I don't blame um, you. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, actually, the, there is a really good example. So um, we 
uh, it's another water-based example. So our rivers, uh, a couple of them completely dry up in summer. So um, there are there are numerous races that might take um, might make use of said river. So in summer, you can imagine that the race is very different. The yeah. experience of driving along a dry riverbed is very different to if it's running uh, well, yeah, with water like, in you know, spring. You, know, um, right. you might even want to reconsider which vehicles you use for for, for said <laughs> challenge, right? Um, so yeah, so there, there is there are definitely other examples. Yeah, that, that, that's really exciting. It's gonna make it's one of the things that I'm most excited about seasons, like trying out different parts, and it's that extra level of exploration because the game looks completely different yeah. in winter compared to summer. So E3 demo, we talked a little bit about E3 earlier, is that on the demo you use the exact same road, and it felt completely different in summer compared to winter. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people didn't, I think, didn't get that about the E3 demo um, because when you went from autumn to winter, that road just looked and felt so completely different. And you know, when we said, "Oh, that's the same road," you know, they were surprised. Like, is that, is, is it really? So I, I think to your point, yeah, absolutely. People will be exploring the world when they first get the game, but they're going to be exploring it like four times over. You know, yeah. Because every time the season takes over, um, there's going to be changes in the world. There's going to be new opportunities. There's going to be um, different things that you can you can do and see. Yeah, because like the streams that we're doing, because we've got another stream next Tuesday, is week on week, the season changes. Is, is that right? So that's right, yeah. And I think I think that's a, a hugely important sort of concept within the game. Um, it ties into the concept of Horizon Life. It ties into the fact that um, Horizon is now a year-round uh, affair rather than just this thing that, that happens like forever in yeah. summer. Um, and it's the fact that um, seasons change everything, visuals, gameplay, driving experience, events and championships, uh, and they do so for everyone every week. Yeah. And I think there's, there's a really important sense of um, collective experience that comes from that. You know, I think everybody is going to be experiencing it together. Everyone's going to be talking about the things that they're looking forward to or the yeah. things they've found when it takes over. Uh, and I think that's going to be a hugely important um, aspect of the game as we, you know, as we get past launch. It's, it's going to be amazing because it's like that moment that you may have raced in winter and it's just like you may be really comfortable with found something in winter. So like, oh, just wait till it gets to winter. It's going to give these like experienced players something yeah. to talk about and like throw back to, which is really cool. Uh, another question from the chat as well is tell us the size comparison of the map compared to Forza Horizon 3. Sure. So it's, um, it's almost exactly the same size as Forza Horizon 3's map. Um, but obviously you'll be experiencing that map in four completely different scenarios. And as we said before, they, 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 you know, that, that seasonality changes absolutely everything. Um, dramatically changes the visuals in the, in the world and the driving experiences. Hmm. So also talking about like ecosystems, I think I think it's it's wait hold on it is ecotypes. Um, so Dan Dante, <laughs> I was just like ecosystems ecotype. No, I remember uh, Dante said, what area of the UK is this based? Um, I think so nice that's so that's a good that's a good question. So the whole world, um, the whole the, the Britain that we have built um, is taken from all over the United Kingdom. You know, so uh, currently we are, I think we're in the Lake District. Are we, we are, in the Lake yeah, District? Yeah, near Devon Water um, at the moment, actually. That's right, yeah. Uh, you, I think you've seen bits of the Cotswolds as well, just as we've been driving around. Um, but there is the Yorkshire Moors, there's the Welsh Valleys, uh, there is the Scottish Highlands, you know, so we've got bits of Glen Cole, we've yeah. got Glenfin and Viaduct. Um, we've got uh, the city of Edinburgh. There's a, there's, there's a lot of Scotland in the... Uh, <laughs> I, I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder why. Strangest thing. Did, I, uh, did, did you have any influence on that, uh, any chance? No, but I was pleased with the decision. <laughs> I, um, I so, bet you were. Um, so, yeah, so we've kind of, uh, we always kind of do like a greatest hit, so whatever location, um, we, you know, we, we visit with the Horizon game, it's exactly what we did with uh, with Australia. Yeah. You know, we didn't build the whole thing, um, but we... we it's we like taking little parts of it. To kind yeah, of... the most beautiful bits, the most interesting and fun bits. It's exactly what we've done with, uh, uh, with Britain as well. And it's, it turns out it's an incredibly varied mm. uh, world. I mean, Britain... I kind of feel like we've kind of rediscovered Britain ourselves yeah, yeah, from 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 making this game. I think the majority of the team here at, at Playground are from you know from Britain. It's um, like I I noticed just having a little play on it earlier is the little details like the road signs, like the road <laughs> signs, and like you're going onto the motorway and you're like, hold on a second. <laughs> It's like actually being in England. So, so that that was exactly the thing that got me as well when they, when they went in, um, and we always sort of we we talked about the feedback we got from Australians last time, and the, one of the things Australians went like really nuts for was the wheelie bins, <laughs> I, and we were just like, and the phone booths as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we yeah. were just like, cool. Um, <laughs> 
And now I, I totally get what they were saying because it's kind of the little things, the mundane things. If you're from this location, the, the blue motorway signs, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, we you, really you realize nailed that. And then suddenly you just kind of put your foot on the accelerator and just go, yeah, like, yeah. go down a little yeah. bit faster. Um, also, another question from the chat, uh, which you're like mentioning Edinburgh. Bishu Satsuma asks, are there any castles? Oh, oh, there are, there are, there are a few. There are, there are. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, we, so as well as some of the locations that Ralph mentioned, we've got uh, Bamba in there as well, which yep. um, people from uh, the UK will probably recognise the name of. It, so that actually has a really cool, huge castle that we've uh, created as a gameplay uh, arena. So you can play um, modes like King and Infected there. And that is also set on, right on the edge of a beach. So it's like this really cool, dramatic visual where you get this massive coastline and then this... That's kind of look beautiful. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I, I, can, I can just imagine this kind of like, I can already see people making like time lapses of like all the different seasons yeah. Yeah. and going back to like b bits, like different points like Bamba Castle and just kind of like it looking absolutely stunning. Uh, but another question from the chat from Octopus Decoy. I want to know if mud, about mud and sand dynamic. It's mm. with beaches. How's that going to work in summer compared to different seasons? So, so yes, like, like we were saying earlier, hottest season, least rain, um, you know, water levels drop, the earth is all kind of baked and hard and dusty. Yeah. Um, so you don't get, I think I'm right in saying you don't get mud in, in summer? Uh, you, you will, but only where it's really, really saturated. So right, you get like right. a, the edge of a puddle or like a big lake. Gotcha. You get like a little gotcha. Bit. So much, much less than you do in spring or, or autumn, which are obviously have, have higher rainfalls. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad o Octopus. Um, Octopus Decoy brought that up because deformable mud, deformable sand are both sort of kind of new features that we've got in the game. Uh, and I think it being autumn next week, we'll, we'll get to see a little bit more. I of think it. we'll do a bit. We'll do a bit of uh, deformable, deformable mud also, next week. Yeah. Also, right? Can we knock over some red post boxes? Right by uh, Tyrannies. <laughs> yes, and it is as satisfying as you would have imagined. The, the letters go flying <laughs> everywhere, and, like the post. You've got it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now I kind of want to see a post box get. Hit. <laughs> if, we can, if we find a post box, we'll try. Really, like there's one. probably one in Ambleside if they want to. Yeah, yeah. Cortana's just asked, right? Because this is actually something we'll see later on in the stream as well. What kind of animals can we expect? Bunnies. Oh yeah. Sheep? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. So um, yeah, you'll see bunnies splitting uh, out you. across. Oh, there you go. We, yeah, we've got, we've timed this well every time so far. <laughs> Potholes, pothole, sheep. There we have them. Yeah, um, and you, see, you might see the odd deer, for instance. And yeah, it's there are the north deer. of the map. Um, some chickens, uh, all of which are fantastically um, adept at avoiding cars. It's, yeah. Of course, like if you if you like, I'm just going to spend a lot of time trying to see if I can hit them. Like it's going to be <laughs> something we're going to try out later, see if we can manage. Um, but also, something that I, I blew me away as well is how you said because of how much detail has gone into every single season is the sheep. They've got like more volume when it's colder. <laughs> Dude, that's one way of putting it. You know, like more volume, they're, like you shear them a little bit. Yeah, their their wool is longer. Their their coats are longer. Yeah, so they get more shorn. Uh, they have more volume. Um, <laughs> they have they've been using some volumizing shampoo yeah, or something, like, you know. They just stay out the salon. <laughs> they get shorn in spring, is it? The uh, summer, I think. No, it's summer. Yeah, because they get hot, right? And okay, have it. And, yeah, then, yeah. and then okay, and then the longest. <laughs> so yeah, they do. There, there are yes. They get they, the shampoo out they, in the winter. Oh, oh, okay. Right, and there we go. There so, you go. That was pretty satisfying. <laughs> yes, yeah, so our sheep are very oh, there by season. Right, it's a good thing. And um, so actually, I think it's going to be getting to a good point to start mm -hmm. heading over into houses as we've just gone into a mm. into a house. So. What we're going to do now, guys, is because E3 was a month ago, which has just absolutely flown by. For those of you that might not have seen it, here's all the action that took place. Let's take a look. Today, I am excited to show you the world premiere of Forza Horizon 4, set in beautiful, historic Britain. Forza Horizon 4 features dynamic seasons, in a shared open world, and seasons change everything. Forza Horizon 4 is coming to Xbox One and Windows 10 on October 2nd, and I am thrilled to announce that it will be included in Xbox Game Pass on the same day.
when Horizon started, you know, Ralph came out, the trailer, you know, people were just screaming. So it was great, you know, sitting in the back, Alan and I kind of took a seat back in the mezzanine. Just watching the reaction ripple through the crowd was just fantastic. To make that announce live on stage, represent the team back at Playground as well, um, yeah, it was a real thrill. <laughs> We have just unveiled the beautiful McLaren Senna. Andy, thank you so much for bringing this wonderful machine with you. Hey, thank you, Grant, for having us here. It was an honor to be here and launch the McLaren Senna at the Mixer booth. Tell me the specs for this thing. I mean, just how fast is it? It is incredible performance for a road car. It's zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. It has, um, as we said, 800 horsepower, 800 kilograms of downforce, all coupled to a car that only weighs 2,961 pounds. It's fantastic to have it as a cover car for Forza Horizon. Graham, it's fantastic to be here. It's been great to be a part of Xbox here at E3. All right, everybody, there you go. The McLaren Senna, absolutely incredible. You've seen it here. And don't worry, you'll be able to experience it for yourself very soon in Forza Horizon 4. E3 was absolutely incredible. I, I'm still so amazed. Every time I see that center in person, it looks glorious. Uh, but I am now joined by Grant, who is the senior game designer, and then also Harry, who is the uh, lead animator. So we're going to kind of be looking at houses, which I'm really excited about, because there's a really awesome new feature, and then like also character customization. Uh, but before we kind of get into that, what is your favorite, favorite season? Because it seems to be like the running theme of the, of the stream so far. Favorite season? I think my first Favorite season Don't is, say winter. I was going to say summer. My favorite, <laughs> right. season, my favorite season is um, summer. I think I just I love all the asphalt roads we have in the game. I yeah. think they uh, are really amazing to drive in summer. And also, um, other than you know this summer, previous summers have been a little less. Great not not us, like so. not like how they are in the game. Yeah, it's it's so, like lucky yeah. it was captured last right. last year. Exactly. So in, in Horizon Four, you get like a week of summer, which is. More than usual for us. I think. Yeah, you, we yeah. normally get like a couple of days and then we gotta be happy with that till the next year. It's like anytime you go abroad, you're like, oh my god, there's actual yeah. sun. Yeah. Like, this is real. Uh, what about you, Harry? Uh, for me, uh, autumn's my favorite. Uh, I like the color change, uh, leaves all over the road, big piles and things like that that you can smash to bits. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's fun. But I, I, see, the thing is, I, I'm kind of leaning with Ralph towards winter. I know I said don't say winter, but I quite like the, I, I do quite like the snow. It's like kind of in Port Horizon 3 with this mountain. It was just like, I loved it and it's like really fun too. Uh, but shall we also remember, guys, if you've got any questions, make sure to put them in the chat below. We'll answer them as best we can. If you've got anything about houses, customization, anything you're seeing during the stream, do make sure to uh, let us ask, put it in the chat and we'll be able to answer them. Um, but yeah, player houses, what are they? Yeah, right. So um, I'm really excited about player houses. Um, it's a feature that I feel like we've uh, designed alongside our community. Mm -hmm. So there's a really cool story. When we released Horizon 1, there were all these threads we saw on various forums where people would park up a car outside a house in Colorado in that game. They would take a picture and they'd post it to the forum and say, this is my house in the game. This is like where I live. <laughs> uh, and that was like really inspirational for us. And I actually used a lot of those um, photos when I first started talking to people about this feature to, to kind of pitch it. Um, so uh, yeah, so in Horizon 4, it makes sense to do it now, right? Because now you're at the festival all year round. Yep. So you need somewhere to sleep. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't just sleep in your car, even though I tried yeah. to argue earlier that you could sleep there if you like it. Probably not in winter, but yeah. No, it'd be a, bit cold. Yeah. Bit, a bit cold or a bit hot, you yeah. know. Like, so um, what, what are you able to do in the player? For, actually, first of all, how many player houses yeah, so, are there in the world? So there are 12 houses. Um, there's like a huge variety. So when you start the game, um, we kind of give you one after the first hour or so. Um, and then from there, you're free to go explore, discover them. Some of them are really well hidden. So my favorite is just deep in the woods. It's this, I think it's a, called a huntsman, Huntsman's Lodge. Yeah. So if you kind of fancy yourself as a, like as a, a woodsman. A uh, woodsman, <laughs> go for the... <laughs> yeah. um, then uh, that might be one for you. What, was your what would you be yours, Harry? I think we talked about it earlier, uh, Edinburgh Castle, the uh, multi-multi-million. You mean the one that's the hardest, <laughs> the hardest to earn in the game, right? Yeah, the one that's going to kind of earn you the most kind of like, all right, fair play, yeah. fair play, you've, you've earned a lot of credit. So a cool thing about um, houses as well is you actually, you get the house, but you also get some bonuses mm. alongside them. So for example, Edinburgh Castle, you actually get a crown. 
So Harry can march around in the game. Wait, as like a character customization item, you get a crown. Yes, yes. So if he gets a crown, well, he can march around in the Regal game. Regal wave as well. That's like, yeah. hello, hello. Yeah, and um, so not just that, you can also uh, sometimes get, um, well, you kind of unlock features sometimes. So there's a, there's a house where um, it will um, enable you to fast travel anywhere in the world. So there's, there's reasons to kind of go out and earn these if you're, if you're not just a collector or one yeah. different form points or you found something, there's a reason go do this because you're going to get all extra perks. Yeah, I think for, for us we know that like, there are a lot of people who play our game and they play it so much and they end up with quite a lot of money just yeah, sitting yeah. in their, their house and this is, some, uh, this is something for them to... to yeah, so go and buy Edinburgh Castle. Yeah, go try yeah. and earn that after collecting all the cars. Exactly. Like, it's a good thing to do. Um, should we also go take have a, have a look at character customization? Because this is something that I got extremely... like I thought was really cool and Harry's going to be uh, talking us through it. Um, so... Character customization. Sure, okay. What can we do? Well, I mean, coming off the back of um, Horizon 3 and previous Forzas, like, you were part of an endless summer festival, even when it rained. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as the characters were up to the task in terms of clothing, there was no real need to customize them. Um, so going into Horizon 4, uh, with the introduction of Horizon Life and Seasons, we thought it'd be cool to have like a fully-fledged customizer um, where you can you know, dress your character to your heart's content. Um, so. Looking at the customizer all up, um, we've got the same 14 drivers from Horizon 3. Uh, we've up res them so they, they look nice and pretty. Um, and then what we've done is we've laid out over 500 items uh, throughout 10 different categories of clothing. So uh, I'll quickly skim through the types and then we can probably dress up a character yeah, or two. Let's dress up. Cool. So uh, we'll go through, we've got tops, uh, that's your upper layer. Yeah. Uh, jackets, so outer layers, coats, uh, par like, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, legs, feet, uh, hats. Uh, eye accessories, nose accessories, <laughs> wrist accessories, uh, hands, so gloves, um, and then there is one more tab, which is outfits, but we'll come back to that later oh. on. Uh, one thing I've also just noticed just before we kind of start dressing our like characters is the different colours. So there's is there different rarities of, of items for you to collect? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so there are um, four rarities, as there are for a lot of things in the game. Yeah. Um, and the way you earn the clothing, uh, sometimes you might get it just by and completing different parts of the game. Mm -hmm. So if you do the drift threads, you might get a special t-shirt um, that kind of tells everyone how good a drift you are. Um, you can also unlock them from wheel spin. Yep. Uh, and um, the, the final way is that in the, there's a, we have like a Forza Fond shop, which I yep. think we're gonna talk about in, a, in another week. Okay. But there'll be items that you, um, you know, will win from, from those events. No, that's, that's cool. It's just like it's something, something to always aim for. So if you kind of like, if you if you if you're a big drifter, you can kind of show off and yeah. kind of dress your character how like to kind of showcase that. Um, so should we kind of like make some crazy outfits and like? Uh, we can give it a well. So let's yeah, let's try and be the guy at the festival that looks like he's having the best time. The best, the yeah, best the time. Yeah, the best time. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I think that <laughs> really vibrant and like flashy, I think I'm is thinking very. I'm thinking animal print. In, yeah, there yeah, we go. You're, you're, you're just thinking like leopard, leopard shirt, okay. So, yeah. Cool, and then we'll jump into jackets. Go, wait, hold on, like, I see the gold blazer, right? Just first of all, gold blazer, gold, gold blazer. I don't think it quite works for the leopard thing, but <laughs> you know. It's not summer wear. It's well, very, yeah. very <laughs> blingy. I think bomber, right? Like, why not? Um, hold on, what else have we got? We've got all sorts. There's like loads. There's like loads of different variations, loads of different things. Um, yeah, I mean, a bit of tweed. You know, bit of tweed. Oh, oh that. Yeah, dresses a country. Yeah, ha has to be done. <laughs> All right. He likes so, it. He really. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, there we go. Yeah, um, jump through lower. So you know, you got a mix of uh, trousers, leggings, shorts. Like you can do some really horrific combinations. <laughs> this beautiful combination. What are those yellow yeah. running shorts? Yeah. Wait, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> hold on. What else have you got? I really like sequin, the kind of like camera. Short shorts, no. Oh, those those look terrible. The tweed. <laughs> that, that is all I'm gonna say straight away. Oh, boy, let's go for the tartan roll-ups. <laughs> what? Tartan roll-ups. Yeah. <laughs> why, why not? Yeah. <laughs> all right, feet. Cool. Um, right, Captain Kilvillard says has come in and said, "Can a man wear a dress?" Yeah. So for, yeah, for us, for us, like accessibility and inclusivity is super important. So. Mm -hmm. For us, we don't really specify gender at all in the yep. game. So it's just you pick the character that you, know, you think resembles you, um, mm -hmm. and you pick the clothes that you want to pick, and there's no limitations. Yeah, clothes, like clothes are clothes. Uh, just to show you that, um, any concoction you come up with with a character, uh, you just flip across the next one, and the outfits moved across. So. so it's just kind of like all kind of seamless between yeah. every character yeah. and customization. It's what you want to wear, it's what you want to choose. Uh, is what you can what you can have in the character. Yep, sure. 
So, hold on. We, can, should, we, should we have a look at outfits, right? Because it was the last thing that we kind of, we, we did mention, just to have a look at that, because it, it did make me laugh. <laughs> Two seconds. Yeah, cool. So we'll leave them at that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go past all the accessories and a clip on mustache. Santa's tash. Good it's got to be done. <laughs> Add the Santa's tash. Santa. Oh, uh -huh. We'll go for the gold, the gold one. one. <laughs> um, yeah, but then, yeah. So outfits are new. Uh, we're looking to extend them um, and get a lot more from them. But yeah, we've gone for... I'm drawn to the disco chicken A chicken suit. suit. Yeah, the uh, the disco chicken's good fun. <laughs> it is very bright. <laughs> that, that, that is the guy having the that, most fun at the yeah, festival, yeah, right? Definitely. You see him, follow him, he'll be there. He, you will have a good time. Yeah, he'll be singing it it's coming <laughs> home, right, all, all the way down the road. Right. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I was determined to get it's coming home somewhere. I'm still an optimistic individual. Um, so we've got all those suits, uh, and then you've also got emotes as well, don't yeah, you? Yeah, so we can take a look at those. I'll jump back out of the chicken suit for that. So uh, we've got 50 emotes at launch, um, all included in the game. Again, going through the same rarity trees. Uh, we've got a good mix of dance moves, memes. Can we uh, see the dab? It's, it's, if, I'm, if I'm so, I apologize, but there, <laughs> there we go. Like, it, it, he's it's, very proud of it. it he's very, he, he shouldn't be proud of that one, but he should. Uh, he has it on there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, if you want many different combinations of dabbing, and I think, I think we've got to do a floss as well. Like, we've got, got to show the floss. Find it. Right. I'm just going through my favorite, my hey, favorite yes. ones. <laughs> right. So go there. Uh, one final question as well uh, for you, Harry, is can we wear kilts in the game? Is there a kilt? There is absolutely a tartan skirt. It's a tartan skirt. <laughs> so it's as close to the kill. Oh, yes. I think it was that a route going from Ralph. Space over there. Like, Come on. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right, but I, we're, we're going to get Chris. We're going to take a look at cars now. So um, big thank you, Harry, for no kind of showing us through that. It's awesome. I can't wait to see all the different combinations that everyone comes up with. Uh, but thank you very much cool. for showing thank that. You. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we're going to get Chris in now as well to kind of show us through, talk us through the cars and kind of like how they work with your houses as well. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us, no, Chris. No problem. Um, shall we get a look into kind of one of the most important parts of Forza, of yep. course, is the cars. Um, and they look beautiful. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit how we can look at cars in the, uh, in the house? Yeah, so player houses, you get everything that you would get in the auto show in your player house. So you can customize it there, upgrades, mm -hmm. etc. You can do designs, paints, livery stuff. Um, but the nice thing here is you can do it with, you can see here, if I just go into Forza Vista, you get natural lighting on the car. So if, if you're doing a livery, you get to see it out in the open world as opposed to in the auto show. So, so you can this see is how it's going to react. This is a really nice touch for the livery makers out there. You can go around and see how reflections of yeah, trees and things. Seeing the car around. you've built, like outside yeah. the house you've bought, it's just, oh, it's so Yes, yeah, it's a great feeling. So in terms of uh, cars and customization, this is the car Andy was driving earlier, the uh, R32 Skyline. Um, mm -hmm. We've now added the, this beautiful Rocket Bunny kit to it. It's a really nice kind of classic looking kit, but it's actually from, I believe, last year. Yeah. Um, so for Horizon 4, uh, we wanted to keep adding kits. It was something that was really w well received with Horizon 3. So we've, we've kept adding, and we're, we're trying to keep up with what people like Liberty Walk, Rocket Bunny, and RWB are doing. Have we got 30 new kits? Yeah, so we've got 30 new kits, um, most of which are branded, and we've also got a, a special uh, off-road kit, yep. which we'll show later on as well. So if we quickly change our car, we can have a look at one of the new kits um, on the McLaren 650S, which is an awesome car to start with. I've become obsessed with McLaren recently, because <laughs> like, yeah. we, we got uh, with Estra with this with the Senna it's being like the Sahara car. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm excited. Every time, it's just like, the Senna is a beautiful car. Right? So we're E3, got to drive around in, in Estoril. It was incredible, and now McLaren are my favorite. This, it's, it's not because it nearly made me sick going around it, and just kind of, it also made, it's a great transition. It's one of the things that, I, I found with the game is how accurate and how much work has gone has been put into it is when you're sitting one of these cars in real life and then go and drive it in the game the grip and like the difference how cars like react and change is incredible and like kind of reflects it really well um, so yeah like McLaren so, so you're gonna love cars. this then if you love McLaren so oh this is an absolutely stunning kit so let's pop that on there have a look at it in Forza Vista so it, it, it's an already awesome looking car, but with this kit on it, it just drops it down to the floor. It's going to change how it performs in game. Oh, for sure, well. yeah. So it's wider, you get wider tires with it, a lot more grip with that. Um, some aerodynamic tweaks there as well. 
uh, especially with the ludicrously large wing hanging off the back of it. So actually, it's something you just mentioned out with like the tires. Can you like change those in any way? So now like in yep. customization. So uh, new for Horizon Four, we've been listening to the community, and a big ask has always been to allow you to change your wheel offset or where your wheels sit on the car. Yeah, it's it's, it's a subtle thing, but it can radically alter how a car looks. Um, so for Horizon Four, over 150 cars are going to have uh, what we're calling wheel spacers. So you can now space your wheels out. Okay. Um, we can actually jump in and have a look at that if we want. So somewhere in it, BMW E30 M3. Um, so this is how it would have sat in Horizon Three. Just have a look at that. It's a great looking car. It's on some like really nice wheels. They're tucked in a little bit though. So. <laughs> For those of us that are a bit car ner nerdy, this is this is quite a big one. So you can now oh, nice. get your wheels so nice you and push them out. out. So you can just get that stance perfect. And as I say, it's going to be on at least 150 cars at launch. Um, and it just it's another little change that you can do to your car to just really nail down the personalization to get exactly how you want it. Um, and another addition, of course, is drift suspension, which we've talked about. So you can now put your drift suspension on, and it gives you a lot more steering angle, so it makes drifting a bit easier, but you can hold much bigger angles. Uh, it's a lot more fun. Yeah, so we've got, so you can custom, you can upgrade your car, you put liveries on, kind of see it, because I, I we're, we're obviously in this stream looking at summer, and it's just amazing to see like all the details, the light reflections, um, what other kind of things can you do? Can you kind of like go in and look at your car, cars and like the outside yeah. as you would in the showroom? Sure, so Forza yeah. Vista's all still here. You can, I mean, you can paint in here as well, right? And that's. There's something really cool about just like being at your house painting your car. Like that's like, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's, it's a thing. dream I, 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 just get, yeah. I just get a paintbrush yeah, out and yeah. I just go and it's like, oh yeah, there we go. It's literally something I do in my driveway. It's yeah, normal, right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, especially when it's Edinburgh Castle as a as <laughs> driveway. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like let me just do a few touch-ups and stuff like that. It does look absolutely incredible, and like I, I love player houses and what it's going to help bring to it. Is there? Um, anything else from player houses that players can do is there from up, so we looked at customization, you've got it where you can you get new perks, you can change your cars, you can add liveries, yep. all the customization. Like I'm really excited to see what players can kind of get in and do. Um, but I, th I think we need to start doing some like challenges and stuff yeah. now. So I think we're going to get Ralph and Ben back in to kind of the, the try sheep challenge. the yeah, sheep, sheep challenge, yeah. which it is. But guys, that is player houses. Um, it's a really awesome new feature. 12 new houses. I'm excited to see, see it in the game when it comes out on the uh, 2nd of October. Yeah. So thank you very much, Grant. Thank you very much, Chris. Cheers. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thank, thank you. you very much. And now what we've all been waiting for to run over sheep <laughs> or attempt to run over sheep. I can't really say that, can I? It's like, let me go on the, she the sheep rush. All right. So, guys, remember as well, this is a developer's build. So if we do something to the sheep that's not supposed we're to be right. done. We're not going to do anything. <laughs> not do anything to the sheep. <laughs> Add volumizing shampoo. Uh, we are, yeah, uh, since E3, uh, obviously there's some sheep in the demo and uh, a comical sheep in the, in the video. Yeah, yeah, maybe uh, the, the trailer. Um, and a lot of people have been saying, can I hit the sheep? Um, and uh, I thought maybe it'd be fun if we go and see if, uh, if you can. If, if, if I can. And um, well, maybe it'd be more successful than trying to get through that. Don't, don't, <laughs> wait, let's not bring that up, okay? It was one time. So in the E3, in the E3 demo, at the end of one of the showcases, there's this little concrete tube, okay, that you have to thread the needle through. And I think I tried about 10 times and I just kept hitting the concrete, which was quite stressful. It was, it okay, was, it was so. A good moment. It was a good moment. Mm -hmm. uh, am, I, am I up first? Mm -hmm. So, okay, right. what the objective we've come up with here, okay, is it's the first one to get it into the uh, sheep into the horse in the quickest time. I, th I think is the thing. If you can do it, <laughs> and we, we haven't got a clock, so we're just going to deem. Or oh, actually, the, I think the mixer chat can decide who's the been the most successful <laughs> at, uh, at herding the sheep. And also, someone was wanting to see cockpit view earlier, so. So there you go. Yeah, there's been cockpit. Right, there we go. I feel like maybe they're, they're, they're running away from you. They're canny, these sheep. You've, you've completely <laughs> lost them. They've just disappeared. 
Actually, one other thing that's worth calling out there is we, we now have this viewer standard on all of our cars. This is brand new. So oh, this is awesome. Yeah, so this is something that mm. um, we did for the E3 demo last time. Uh, so it's uh, looked really great if you're using a wheel setup uh, at home. Um, so now everybody's, uh, everybody's got that option. But it is on, it is on all cars now, I yeah. think I am right. So that is correct, yeah. yeah. Um, Daniel Banks has actually just asked, is, is that the white horse? It is. It is the white horse. I think that's going to be the amazing thing is all the little details that people notice and like kind of all the landmarks and areas. I think that's something that is peak players is going to get, especially if you're from the UK, from Britain, you're just going to be like, oh, this is a really cool thing to see. Try like to. The, it's like the balloons all at Brist around Bristol. Mm. I tried right. to get a good run-up at them that time. Obi21 says, Whoa. you are ruining someone's farm. You're breaking, <laughs> you're breaking all their walls, you're knocking all the signs over. That is, so honestly, that was one of the things I heard most post E3, uh, after are there potholes, um, was um, <laughs> won't someone think of the poor farmers? <laughs> like, all the, all the, the, the sort of dry stone walls which you know, which are all over Britain, and we couldn't not include, and we also couldn't make them like unbreakable because that would just be, you know, that would not be fun. Um, so we made them breakable, and suddenly uh, people are really concerned about uh, about the farmers. Uh. Um, but it, they they get rebuilt almost immediately uh, by by the Horizon team. Uh, so so no it's one hard at work. No all one. The time. Yeah, if you were to go back there in two minutes, rebuilt, perfect. So, uh, you were highly efficient. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's important. It's important. Maybe I should try to like get one of the sheep by knocking the stone into them. <laughs> the what? Just knock the sheep out of the I, stone? I, well, yeah. Is it? I, I'm thinking of coming at them from all angles, basically. Right. They are incredibly mobile. That is the. I did say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, like, oh, the, hard, the hardest, the hardest things to do in all time is like catch a sheep. Um, also, KFC Crispy just says. Who needs a dog if you've got a car? Indeed. It's just replacing sheepdogs. Like, it takes Absolutely. a little work. Well, clearly not on this, uh, let's say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try and like round them inside the horse. What are you, do are you doing? It all nice Shall we do a race? Shall we go and do a race? Where's Andy? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Andy, let's, let's take a look at a Cannot run. be on screen for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Debug very well. Poor sheepies, can you talk more about the houses? Can I have more than one? Yes. More than one house. yes, you can. You can have all 12. So everybody gets the first one, which was actually the one we were at, um, very early in the game for free, just to give you uh, yeah, I know, right? um, somewhere, somewhere to, to, to live. Um, yeah. But the remaining 11 are, are there for you to go by at any point during the game. Um, I guess depending on where you are in the world, it's, it's good to have a house you know, that, that you can restart from and that you can fast travel to, um, or based on just kind of, I, I don't know, like bragging rights as well. I think, I think maybe we were talking about this earlier, the first person who actually buys Edinburgh Castle, because it's super expensive in the game, um, but when somebody saves up and buys it, I think there's going to be real bragging rights about, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I'm the first person to, to own Edinburgh Castle. So. You know, just like, I, I saved all my credits up, got some, got some wheel spins. Yeah. I, yeah, it's one of the things because there's, there's a few different like wheel spin types. And there's two types of wheel spins now, actually. Yeah, and I imagine I think we're going to show them on a forthcoming stream uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so there's the the wheel spin that everybody uh, is familiar with, knows yep. and loves from previous Horizon games. Um, but there is now a super wheel spin as well. Um, and uh, as everyone can guess, super wheel spins are better than <laughs> normal wheel spins. Just the addition of super they're, and you're there. It's yeah, like... so they're actually um, three times uh, as good as normal. So there's three reels rather than one, which all spin, uh, and you can win, uh, I think as Grant mentioned earlier, uh, you can win cars, you can win cash, you can win emotes and uh, clothing items and uh, chat messages for the... Uh, um, for the game as well, so they're super fun to uh, to see what you can get out of them. I just keep getting obsessed every time I see it. Look at the game. It's just like the, the, all the little details and like, it's wait, what's that? that is, is that that castle? Was that so like that, a little? Thing? I was going to say for a castle fan, that is uh, yeah, that's that true. is one of the the three castles in the game. I want to say. Uh, yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, is that, yeah. Is so, that so, one you can buy, or is that? No. So this is actually the the location for the Horizon Festival this time around. So we've we've set it within the ruins of this this old castle, um, which was, was something that um, somebody, somebody gave me a, a, a note to watch um, 
John Wick 2, and there was a really cool scene in that movie where they had like a club that had been set up. Yeah, 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 I've seen you that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it, so it was like, oh, that's a really cool idea. And then the whole, you know, Horizon Festival, the colour and all the lights and the, the sort of installation pieces you expect to see in the, in the festival, plus the sort of ancient architecture of Britain felt like a cool combo that we could use. Yeah, it's a nice little, like, yeah. combination yeah. to get it. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Banks has also asked, are bonus boards still a thing? Bonus boards are still totally a thing, yeah. Uh, and I think actually, again, I, I realize I'm like teasing stuff that's in future weeks a lot here, but in future weeks, uh, I think we're gonna let you go and look at some of the more devious placements for, uh, for bonus boards um, around the world because there are still hundreds of them to go and find, and sometimes they're just, you know, they're by the side of the road or in a field. Um, but a lot of the time, uh, our, uh, our designers take a great deal of pleasure in hiding them in difficult to reach places. Uh, and we've done that this time, uh, and I think we're going to go hunting for a couple of them. Uh, maybe next week, uh, maybe in spring. Tim? Go have a hunt for some boards in the spring as well. Absolutely. Uh, guys, remember, if you've got any more questions that you want Ralph and Ben to answer, drop them in the chat and we'll have a chance to do them. Because remember, we're looking at gameplay from summer right now, uh, which I think is like the more traditional like um, season that players would have been used to from... So, like, yeah, previously. Horizon has, has always been a, a, a summer game, right, yeah. right, right back to the, the, the first one. It's always been kind of... I mean, we've always described it yeah. as an endless summer. Um, which I guess is double-edged, right, and that it's, hey, that, that's what everyone wants, but also it never ends. Um, now we have this real sense of sort of time moving on and progressing, um, and, and thus you living at this place, um, like, for reals. Um, so, so, yeah, absolutely. Summer is the traditional um, season of, uh, of Horizon, but now you're going to be experiencing it all year round. I just get, like, every time I look at these, like, races and stuff, because I one of my big, biggest things I've loved with Horizon games in the past is all the different race types you have. And I think having the seasons and kind of, like, being able to complement those styles is just going to change players' approaches and kind of expand on it. Like, what's your personal favourite in summer, especially, kind of, like, race to go and do? So I'm a massive cross-country fan, um, and we have... I think we've got some of the best cross countries we've ever done in, uh, in uh, Horizon games. Partly that owes to the fact that this is probably, uh, uh, definitely, the most mm -hmm. vertical world we've ever, yeah. ever created. And I know that some of our fans have, you know, have given us feedback about Australia being you know, pretty flat. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to have that uh, that criticism of this game. This has just made me want to go to that jump. You know, <laughs> you, you know the yeah. one I'm on about. Okay, just to kind of see it because I think that is the talking like the verticality of the game there are some ridiculous jumps yeah like, and, and also th another thing that everybody you know was really asking for which which we've got in this game some some proper um tarmac uh switch switch backs. Backs, yeah right? yeah uh, so you can you know get your drift on and then that's i mean personally that's my sort of favorite thing to do in this game is to race on on asphalt it's um yeah it's kind of super, yeah. super fun yeah. Wait, is that is that kind of like a lot faster is it kind of i don't know i just think there's something about the technicality that's involved with that that style of racing that really appeals to me personally um but yeah the, the, there's some really really cool pieces of, of of road network in this game that people are going to be able to, mm -hmm. to real, really test their skills on i think we've just seen that it's from the from the gameplay that we've seen so far just the, how much differentiation from like kind of drifting tracks kind of on like kind of like um, more dirty roads to like kind of just riding along the motorways here yeah. um i think this is kind of kind of very Tokyo Drift kind of going up the mountain. Um, what are the, we've got a few, we've actually got a few more questions as well. Silent K666 asks, is there an airport in the game? Uh, there is, yeah, it's actually, so it's become a bit of a tradition for us to include a, a, an airport. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got one in there. It's, uh, this time it's a slightly older abandoned airfield that's out in the, the middle of the sticks or towards the north, uh, north side of the map. And there's, there's some really cool stuff that the uh, level design team have done with that as well. So they've, they've set up some really cool, uh, how would you describe them? It's almost like an assault course there that you can kind of go. Kind of, yeah, and... kind of like a Jim Canna has been yeah. uh, been filmed there, you yeah. know, kind of thing. So uh, tires and uh, obstacles and, and yeah. stuff like that. As, and, and it's fair to say that in the past, you know, we've always used the runway as that drag strip moment yeah. uh, in the games, but. We, but this time we actually have a dedicated drag strip uh, in the festival, uh, which people may have seen from some of uh, Yeah, some no, I, I think we were at it earlier, actually. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then there are, there are other drag strips that feature in the game as well. So we actually do have, as ridiculous as this sounds, there is one on the ice lake uh, in winter. That you can, there is a drag yeah, strip yeah. on the ice lake. Yeah. And that's, one on the beach not. as well, if yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right, yeah. See, I, I think that's one of the things that just kind of 
helps with showing seasons and how much difference there's going to be. And this is the jump that we're on about. And then, oh, okay, hold on. This is just incredible for me. Like, this kind of seen that. <laughs> that is very British. Yep. Right, that kind of like, <laughs> that, that landscape is very Jumping British. Jumping off side, the cliff. Then, like, rock walls. <laughs> You know, not the maybe to jump off the cliff, but that kind of view yeah. for me is very British summer. Um, a lot of people um, are asking to see the map as well. If we can, are we, are we able to have? We're going to do map it or? next week when uh, we fix the bug with it. That, 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 <laughs> that's, 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 that's developer honesty for you, right there. Yeah, it's like yeah, we can't really show you that right now, but um, so we, can, we can't show the map. But next week, next week, if you want to see the map, we will take a look at the map. So um, next week, remember that. Also, uh, L Ward has just asked, is drone mode still a thing? Drone mode is still a thing, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Are we, are we able to take a, have a look at drone uh, mode quickly? We can, yeah. We can. And also, it's worth, it's worth mentioning, actually, with, with drone mode. So one of the things that to uh, totally happened in 3 with the community that we ne didn't necessarily expect uh, was that we... So we, um, just because we were trying to make a really authentic world, we built in all the... Uh, laybys and car parks that existed in the, in the parts of the world we were recreating in Australia. And people started parking up there and having ad hoc car meets and, mm. and using drone mode to like film them and everything. So it, we, we totally made sure that we're catering to that, that now as well. Um, so we've got specific hangout spaces in the festival and we've made sure the whole world is littered with more of those kinds of areas for people to do that kind of thing. Be because it's probably worth mentioning that this whole stream um, has been done in Horizon Solo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we obviously we talked about how the game is a shared world game. It would be mostly online, I guess, is probably a good way of uh, describing it. Um, but lots of people at E3 um, fed back to us and said, you know, what if I want to play it offline? What if I, what if I can't play it online? Um, this is, I guess, to demonstrate the fact that you, you can play you still solo get the uh, against drive avatars and a very similar experience, you know, in that regard to, to Forza Horizon 3. Um, next week on our stream in autumn, next Tuesday, um, we're going to be showing more of uh, the shared world stuff. So we're going to be showing Horizon Life. We're going to be showing some of the really cool things that you can do. Um, while the game is connected and while you are sharing the world with everyone else who is playing it. Uh, and we're going to try and convince some uh, some folks to stay late and uh, upstairs and, and play the game and with us. Uh, and get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for those wondering, what are the details for next week's stream? Uh, so that's a good question. So we're next Tuesday, I think at the earlier time of 7pm British summer time. Yep. Do your uh, um, your math on that, depending on where you live, because uh, we're not obviously uh, doing it with so IX. We, we've got it here. We've got Tuesday yes. the 17th. 7 p.m. BST or 11 a.m. PT. Um, so those those are the times you find. So what you can do as well is follow the channel, um, so you'll get notified uh, when when we go live, so you don't miss that out. Um, because I think that'll be a really fun stream and also the first look at autumn. Yeah, so we're going to be showing autumn next week. We're going to be showing uh, Shared World, Horizon Life. Uh, Horizon Life. Um, we are going to be showing a showcase, um, I believe, as well, uh, which is. Um, which is just brilliant. That's why we're showing it. Is it there's, is, no, there's no narrative there. Is it's it just, a it's just is really, it, really is cool. Is it the Thread the Needle showcase or is it a different one? It's a different one. It's, it's, a different it's something one. you have never seen before and I mean that in almost every sense. <laughs> but the, that, that worries me. You've never seen Don't before. be worried, be excited. Is, yeah. is, is it going to be helicopters? Is it going to be like bikes I flying will, over you? I, I will leave you to guess and you will not. <laughs> we, we, we will find out next week. Yeah. Um, as well, is just, just for people that are really interested in the game, is when people are going to be able to get their hands on it? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, so we are, I mean, we're still three months away from launch. Yep. Sorry about that, but, you know, but we are. Uh, the game is coming on Xbox One and Windows 10 PCs um, on October 2nd of this year. And as we announced at E3, it is going to be on Xbox Game Pass on the very same day. Uh, so if you're in that, uh, if you're on that service, you're going to be able to, to play it there. To pick it up and play it, which is which really, so I, I, I'm really excited about Games Pass because it's, it's made me try out games that I wouldn't have tried out in the, in, in the past. And it means you can hop on, play it. Huh? Hey, that's not what I meant. You know. I, I know what you meant. You said it. It's just one of those things. It's a service that you can get involved in. You can play. You can all these brand new games like earlier in the year. We can hop on, try it out. Yeah. So October second. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, we are looking forward to that, and uh, we're going to keep doing stuff like this in the interim while we uh, um, 
while we uh, continue to work on the game. Yeah, sure, okay. So, um, for those of you that are watching at home, that is coming to the end of looking at summer. Uh, for Forza Horizon 4 looks absolutely beautiful. Just a quick recap, we've looked at player houses, we've tried to hit some sheep and failed miserably, um, <laughs> we've kind of taken a look at some events, races, it looks amazing. Do make sure to let us know what you think uh, in the comments as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. A big thank you to Ralph and Ben for Thanks, giving us access and showing us the game. Like, looks amazing. I can't wait to next week to see it in autumn because it changes week on week. Uh, but for those who are watching, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.